Good evening, everyone. My name is Jane Taylor, and I am chair of Leeds Civic Trust. And on the trust's behalf, it is my pleasure to welcome you all here. Now, I was going to say on this beautiful evening about three hours ago, but it's just an evening now, and hopefully it will stay dry. We are here to mark the life and death, almost 53 years to the day, of David Oluwale, so as to ensure that his story will never be forgotten. That story will be brought to you this evening by a variety of speakers, poems, and music. Of the many guests to this evening's event, I should like to give a special welcome to James Lewis, leader of Leeds City Council, Professor Carol Phillips, and Dr. Emily Zobel Marshall. Carol is an internationally acclaimed writer based in Yale University in Connecticut and patron of the David Oluwale Memorial Association, known as DOMA. We are delighted that he's traveled thousands of miles to be our unveiler this evening. Emily is co-chair of DOMA and will act as compare at this evening's ceremony. Now, for those of you who may not know, Leeds Civic Trust was formed nearly 57 years ago in October 1965. One of its charitable objectives is to stimulate public interest in and care for the beauty and unique heritage of the city. It was felt that one way the Trust could tell the story of that unique heritage was to set up a blue plaque scheme, which we duly did in November 1987, nearly 35 years ago. Over the years, blue plaques have been awarded to people of significance and places and events that have shaped Leeds into the city that it is today. The subject of today's plaque, David Oluwale, about whom more will be said by our other guests, has, as I'm sure you will agree, left a lasting legacy both locally and nationally. This plaque is the 186th plaque to be unveiled, the second this year, and before I hand over to Emily, I should like to recognize the huge amount of work that she, Max Farah, Doma, and our staff at Leeds Civic Trust have put in to get us where we are today and for organizing a crowdfunding campaign to raise money to pay for this plaque, an outstanding achievement. So over to you, Emily. Thank you so much, uh, Jane. Welcome. It's so wonderful to see so many of you here today um, gathered for what is going to be a really historic occasion for our city. So I'm going to introduce all our speakers and, and then once our speakers have, uh, have done their bit, they all head over to Leeds Bridge for the unveiling. <coughs> so I'm Emily Zobel Marshall. I'm the co-chair of the David Bolawali Memorial Association and I'm also a reader at Leeds Beckett University in post-colonial literature. I tend to basically follow Max about with all his crazy schemes. <laughs> um, so first of all, can I begin by um, giving a vote of immense thanks to Leeds Civic Trust, Leeds Inspired, and all the crowd funders that have made this campaign possible. It means a great deal to me to see a plaque for David being installed on Leeds Bridge today, and like to particularly thank Mel Roberts and Martin Hamilton from the Leeds Civic Trust for their support and enthusiasm for the idea when we revisited and reignited the ongoing campaign for a blue plaque for David together over three years ago. I'd like to now introduce our speakers. So we're going to begin with Carol Phillips. Carol Phillips is the patron for the David Olawali Memorial Association. He was born in St. Kitts and he grew up and went to school in Leeds. So he's one of us and he now lives and teaches in the US, which we'll forgive him for. <laughs> He's the author of many world-famous books of fiction and non-fiction, and has written for the stage and for the screen. It was Carol's chapter on David Olawali in his 2007 book, Foreigners, Three English Lives, 
and his suggestion that there should be a memorial to David that really inspired our work at DOMA. Our next speaker will be Councillor Abigail Marshall Katung. Councillor Abigail is a leading member of Leeds City Council. She's a businesswoman, also a keen and mean sprinter, and uh, the co-chair of DOMA. So I have a, it's a great honour to be able to work with um, Councillor Abigail. Next up will be Councillor James Lewis. Councillor Lewis is the leader of Leeds City Council. We were originally supported by a former Leeds City Council councillor, Councillor Lee Keith Wakefield, back in 2008. And it is thanks to Leeds City Council that we've made so much progress in recent years. After Councillor James Lewis, we're going to have a poem by James Lee. James is a sixth form a uh, sixth former at Leeds Grammar School who wrote a poem during the daily David Olawali section of the Geraldine Connor Foundation project Locks to Legacies which was led by Asher Jail and uh, he's one of our very active DOMA board members. This will be followed by Alison Lowe, OBE. Alison is the Deputy Mayor of West Yorkshire for crime and policing. Very important job and a major supporter of DOMA's work uh, during her previous role as CEO of the Leeds NGO Touchstone. And finally, we'll have Detective Chief Superintendent Carl Gavin. Carl is the son of police cadet Gary Galvin, who exposed the crimes against David Olawali in 1970. It's no exaggeration to say that had it not been for Gary Galvin, we would never have known about David Olawali's tragic death. Carl is now a detective chief superintendent with West Yorkshire Police and has championed our cause with several chief constables over many years. So after hearing from this fantastic array of speakers, we'll then all walk over together to Leeds Bridge for the unveiling. So please, could I ask uh, Carol to the stage? Thank you all. As an 11-year-old schoolboy growing up in Leeds, each morning I would undertake the long bus journey from Winmore to the city centre where my school was located. I first made this journey in September 1969. Five months earlier, in April 1969, a man named David Olawali had been killed in the city centre. The story had been widely reported in newspapers and on television. It was clear, even to my 11-year-old senses, that the city of Leeds was somewhat traumatized by the death of this man named David Oliver. During the next two years, this sense of trauma deepened as an external police investigation was opened into what exactly had transpired that had caused this man to lose his life. The results of the investigation were shocking, and eventually two police officers stood trial and were subsequently jailed for their part in the death of David Oliwali. Their gross behavior had gone way beyond any authority granted to them by their uniform or their badge. David Olawali arrived in Leeds in 1949, a teenage stowaway on a ship from Nigeria that had docked at Hull. In those days, it was customary for stowaways to receive a mandatory short sentence, which was often served at Armley Jail here in Leeds. Upon his release, David found lodgings near the university and secured a job in a car factory in Hunslet. The young man hoped to one day 
become an engineer, but it wasn't to be. On an almost daily basis, the Leeds City Police Force targeted David Oluwale. Young hooligans mercilessly taunted him, but David Oluwale always answered back. And as a result, he ended up being dispatched to the other place of incarceration that was meant to control those who simply didn't know their place, the mental asylum. In this case, the one at Menston, where he remained for eight years. Once discharged, David had nowhere to live, and so he took to the streets of Leeds, sleeping in shop doorways and wherever he could find shelter. Inevitably, the police brutality began again, and this time it escalated. In April 1969, two Leeds City Police officers chased a terrified David Oluwale through the city centre streets, and somehow David, a man who couldn't swim, ended up in the river. There were, of course, no witnesses. David Oluwale drowned to death. During the short 39 years of his life, many people and many institutions in this city neglected David Oluwale. He was an immigrant. He was homeless. He was plagued with psychological problems. He was black. These are facts. To some he was invisible, the man in the street that you quickly step around as you avert your eyes. To others, he was simply a disheveled nuisance, an embarrassing blot on the landscape. However, over the years the evidence of David's life and the ugly reality of his death have proved instructive, forcing this city to confront many uncomfortable truths. Because of David Oluwale, I think we have a better understanding of ourselves, our short-sightedness, our forgetfulness, our inability to take responsibility for the ills in our city, our cowardice. As a city, we failed him. But let's learn from this and not fail ourselves. We are, all of us, social animals. We live in communities, and we have a deep responsibility to look out for those amongst us who are weak and who are suffering. After all, animals do this. And just what kind of animals are we if we fail to do this for our fellow human beings? During the past decade, the David Oluwale Memorial Association has actually done astonishing work in this city to focus our collective minds on the legacy and the death of David Oluwale. They have paid particular, but not exclusive attention to issues that are associated with migration, with homelessness, with racism, and with mental health. Their work is ongoing, and together with Leeds Civic Trust, they offer us today a wonderful and permanent tribute to the life of this citizen of Leeds in the form of a blue plaque. But one final thought. We should, at this moment, all of us remember that David Oluwale's life may have ended here in Leeds, but like all immigrants to our city, his journey began elsewhere, across the water in Nigeria. In 1949, his parents and his siblings said goodbye to a brave, ambitious teenager who was ready to depart for England. We owe his parents a moment of quiet reflection. Your teenage son came to us and thereafter endured 
a difficult 20 years in our city. We could have done more for him. In fact, we should have done more for him. But we do remember your David. In fact, we've learned from him. And today in Leeds, we honor your son. Thank you very much, um, Carol Phillips. That was very emotional. Um, on behalf of David Oluwale Memorial Association, a very good evening to each and every one of you. Abigail Marshall Katung is my name. I am one of the co-chairs of the association. And I felt really excited when I woke up this morning, but the moment I arrived at Tetley's, I became very emotional. So if I do go quiet, please bear with me. Today, we have heard from Carol Phillips about David Oluwale and all that happened in his life. A lot of it is about yesterday, which none of us can turn back the hands of time and we cannot bring back. Tomorrow doesn't exist. What we have is today. So for me, for today, it's gratitude. Each and every one of us standing here today, we're not better than those who have left before us, but we're here for a reason. We want to use this time to say thank you to Lead Civic Trust for this momentous event, and to say thank you for thinking of David. When David died, my father was only two years old, so I wasn't even born. But I'm standing here today in his name, and it still feels like I knew him. When I see David, I see my two black sons, and I'm worried and scared of their future. But what have we tried to do in Leeds City Council? After saying a huge thank you to Leeds Civic Trust, our earnest and sincere gratitude is to Leeds City Council. It's been a journey to be where we are today. So many of you will not be aware of the tough times, of the thorns we've had to go through to stand here today and remember David Oluwale. Why did I join this board? I was invited by a group of people. None of them looked like David. None. But they were fighting his course. It was a no-brainer that I joined that group. And I said, yes, I will. I was born Nigerian. I didn't come here like David came. David came in a stowaway. I came on a flight. So very different, but an immigrant. But what still remains is we still have to deal with lots of what David dealt with. In our city today, we still have homeless people. Racism is still on the increase. Mental health. Those were all the things that David had. But today, we have a lead city council, a council of compassion and a council of sanctuary. We have so many elected members here today who have supported this cause and continue to. To our leader, who I'll call shortly, we want to say thank you. Before him was Councillor Blake who has played a huge part in where we are today, and also Keith Wakefield. We want to say thank you. To the CEO of Leeds City Council as well, Tom Riordan and his team, Martin Farrington, we want to say thank you. To the executive members, Councillor Deborah Cooper, only a few months ago, we were sat around the table, still trying to have a fight on where 
David should be remembered. Our battles each single day as people of color is glory. Lots of times we don't carry it around with us, but it's our everyday reality. I'm here to encourage each and every one of you. David's story is my story. It's your story. None of us was born to hate. We were actually born to love. Our diversity is our fact. It's not what we choose. But our inclusion is our choice. Be kind. Because you don't know what the next person beside you is going through. So my color and your color, I didn't choose it. But I'm grateful to God for who I am and what I am. And I want each and every one of you to be grateful too. So as we remember David, we want to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we want to call on each and every one of you in this city where you see racism, where you see discrimination, where you see hate. Call it out. Report it. Challenge it. And let's stop it. So once again, I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts on behalf of David Oluwale Memorial Association. Lots of board members are here today. I'm sure most of them are wearing green so you can kind of recognize them. So thank you for all those who have remembered to wear green today. Green is the national color of Nigerians. So um, yes, evergreen. So please be kind to all those wearing green. And if you just wore green by accident, please give yourself a big hand of applause as well. So thank you. Lovely to see our Lord Mayor. Thank you very much for coming. We truly appreciate it. And to each and every one of you who have taken your time to be, with, to be here with us. Thank you. John Battle, I've seen him somewhere. Want to say thank you. He's been chairing the board for so many years. John, we want to say we are grateful for all the hard work that you've done. Truly appreciate it. Professor Max Farah, that is another man. I don't know how he does it. He just keeps, he's got more energy than me three times. But thank you very much. For our Deputy Mayor for coming as well, we want to say thank you very much for coming. If I haven't mentioned your name, I still love you. Bear with me. So thank you all so very much. It is, a, it is with great delight that I invite the leader of the council, our own very councillor, James Lewis. Please give him a hand of applause. Thank you, Abigail. I'm Councillor James Lewis, leader of Leeds City Council. I just wanted to say a few brief words at this event. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, everybody from the David Oluwale Memorial Association for the work they've done to get to this point, and the Civic Trust and the uh, council departments that have been involved in bringing this forward and will continue to work um, in developing uh, the statue on this site. Um, I'm touched to be here today. I get invited to quite a few blue plaque openings, unveilings and things like that. And today has really touched me because sometimes we remember the things that are good about the city and make us feel good about the city, such as the building behind us where uh, Leeds United were formed. Sometimes we, um, sometimes we celebrate the history of different communities. Uh, I unveiled a plaque on the New Penny just over there somewhere um, to mark the history of the LGBT community in Leeds. But sometimes uh, the remembrance of the city's history has to cover the bits that don't make us feel good, that challenge us, that make us look back at things that have happened and challenge those of us involved in public services today to make sure we do better than has happened in the past. And today is a really important occasion and I think it is right that as part of the history of the city we remember remember the black marks as well as remembering the celebrations and the history of David Oluwale is being a stain on the city and it is something that we shouldn't uh, brush away it's something that we should bring forward as a um, um, as a memorial, uh, as a uh, marker of what we can do better and how we can all be better in the way we serve this city um, we will continue to do that, those of us who are elected, those of us that work in public services, we will continue to do that as we move forward. And I hope today is part of marking that. You know, it's
<laughs> if you came to this part of the city five years ago, you wouldn't recognise it. You certainly wouldn't recognise it from 50 years ago. The city is developing and changing, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't um, uh, um, we shouldn't continue to remember the city's history. And like you say, the difficult bits, not just the easy bits and the celebratory bits. So thank you to everybody who's been involved in bringing this forward, um, and I look forward to continuing to work on this vital work. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Joel Lee, and I'll read my poem about David Oluwale. Forged from the dusty, bustling streets of Lagos, Nigeria, Oluwale, an icon, a victim yet a hero. He risked his life for a new one, a fresh start, a better chance in life. Stowed away on a ship like a limpet on a whale, he landed in the land of the fishermen, reeled in by the people of the fast-flowing river. Arrived there with the prospects of a tailor, an engineer, a dancer. Yankee, they called him, the man who loved to dance. You see, a good, a hard-working man. He did his work and he had his fun. So how was it Yankee was found floating lifeless on the river air? This is a sad tale of how racism carved into society due to 400 years of generational oppression, once again leaves a scar in British history. We must not forget his story or his journey, because his story is our story. His death was not in vain, and through David Oliver, we rose and we still rise to fight injustice, prejudice, and inequality of any kind. Uh, thank you very much for listening and enjoying us. That was amazing, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Alison Lowe and I have the privilege of being uh, the Deputy Mayor for Policing and Crime here in West Yorkshire. So policing is at the heart of my role um, and alongside our Mayor, Tracy Brabin, uh, my job is to hold the police to account for the way that they police West Yorkshire and also for the way that they uh, encourage all our communities to engage with policing. And number one on my agenda is equality, diversity, human rights, and race disparities. These are the areas that I am most passionate about and that I am working with West Yorkshire Police uh, to uh, address uh, the issues that we face today, but also remembering the, the, the history and the legacy of uh, the death of David Oluwale. Because David Oluwale is a stain, but it is also um, by remembering him that we can move forward and improve because without the loss of David, without the terrible tragedy uh, of David, we would not know what good looked like, we would not know what hate we were capable of, but also what love we are also capable of and what we're supposed to be showing to each other and to all our communities. I was a very small child when uh, David died. My dad came here also from St Kitts um, in the 1950s and he talked about David Oluwale to me and to my brothers and sisters and told us about what could happen here in Leeds. Despite the fear, despite the worry that we would be treated similarly to David, we carved out lives here in Leeds because Leeds is a great place to live. Leeds is a great pl place where people can thrive. But we can only do that if we remember that Leeds has also got its dark side. Working together, living together, loving together, we can bypass and work through some of that darkness, walk into the light, bring others with us, make Leeds the city of love, the city of light, uh, the city of sanctuary that's already been spoken about. We don't want to ever see another David Oluwale here in Leeds. We don't want to see David Oluwale being killed anywhere else on this planet. So please show love, show compassion, and together we will get to a place where all of us can live and can thrive. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you to everybody that's made this, this happen uh, and to all of the speakers. My name's Carl Galvin. I'm a detective, chief superintendent in West Yorkshire Police. Uh, and I'm also the son of police cadet Gary Galvin, who was, most of you will know, involved in whistleblowing what went on in terms of what happened to David. The 25th of April today, 
Four weeks ago, it was the 25th of March, which was 20 years since my father passed away. And it was on that day, thinking of how I might want to remember him, that I decided that I'd take a walk with the dog and with my uh, youngest girl down to um, the River Air and the canal and down to Nostra. I often go there um, because being close to where David was found makes me feel close to my father. 20 years ago, when he passed away, was round about the same time I got to learn about the story of David. It was whilst my dad was ill um, with cancer, receiving palliative care up at Wheatfields Hospice, that he pulled me to one side, away from my mum, away from my younger brother, we're a small family, uh, my dad had, had his, my dad's got, got no other family, my mum's a Bernardo's baby, and there's just me and my brother. And my dad took me to one side and said, when you come up tomorrow night, will you go in the wardrobe and uh, just have a look underneath the shoe boxes? There's a scrapbook. If you have a look through that and bring it up, there's something that I want to tell you about. Uh, I went home to my, to my mum's house, found the scrapbook, and for those of you that have seen the scrapbook before, when it was on display at the Tetley uh, during the um, display a few, a few years ago, my dad had kept an archive of everything that happened in respect of, of David. And he told me the story. He told me about what he'd done. He told me about David's life and what had happened to David. And he also told me about... Um, what had happened to him uh, as a result of that from some of his colleagues. He also knew that the story of David would be massively important to um, me, to our family, and to my role as a police officer for the next however many years. Really interestingly, my dad always called David Oluwale, David. And I've always thought to myself since that time that he personalised David, albeit he never knew him. He actually felt that he did know him really, really well. And so since that time, I've always been really proud to be associated with the work of Dommer, with the story of David and with the actions of my father. My role as part of this is an odd one, because of course I have the legacy of my father, which I'm immensely proud of, but also I'm a police officer in West Yorkshire Police, and as well as my father's actions and the subsequent investigation being so important in understanding the story, we should never have to tell the story, because David should never be put into the position he was put into. As a police officer, over the last 26 years, I've often had to deal with difficult situations. I've had to deal with difficult things that I've seen, difficult things that I've heard, and deliver difficult messages around a whole range of activity and things. But it's also an important part of being a police officer that we open our ears and that we listen to difficult messages about the service as well and that we're able to understand when we have got things wrong and how we can move forward and improve. I can't explain why I feel this, but whenever I'm involved in anything to do with David, it's always massively positive. I look still here now today. It was starting to bounce it down about an hour ago, and all of a sudden people started speaking about David, and the rain goes away and the clouds clear. I look around and everyone's dressed colourfully and we've heard some fantastic, passionate speeches about um, what David's story means to Leeds and about what this plaque means. And I was thinking of one word that summed up David's story to me. And it's really strange, but I can't get away from that word being the word positive. Whenever I think of David's story and think of the journey that Leeds has then come through and the journey that West Yorkshire Police has come through, it's really positive. And we continue to try and take those positive steps forward to make sure that diversity is the heart of everything we do in this city 
and the inclusion of every single resident, every single visitor, and every single person who's associated to this city is something that's massively important. So I really enjoy my involvement. I am immensely proud of what my father did, and I'm also immensely proud of everybody that's involved in DOMA and involved in Leeds Civic Trust and what you've all done in making this reality. Congratulations to everybody. Thank you everybody for attending tonight, and I hope you thoroughly enjoy the unveiling in a few minutes' time. so much Carl and thank you to all our moving speeches that we've had so far today. Now if you'd like to um, follow me and Max we'll head over to the Leeds Bridge for the grand finale for the unveiling of the plaque. Thank you all. I'd like to introduce Ian Dewey and his new poem today is one of several that he has written in homage to David Oluwali. One of his poems is also inscribed on a plaque in the Mary Seacole Garden on Chapel Town Road. So over to you, Ian. Thank you very much, Emily. Um, this could have been a song. Um, it was inspired by a, John, a poem by John Agard, a wonderful poet of um, Guyanese descent. And I like the way his rhymes represented the bridge. So this, is a, this has been... This is actually now as a poem by the late John Agard. It's called Bridge Builder, and it's after John Agard. Thanks all who raised this plaque, and you, drawn here to stand for David too. His memories a bridge love built, from innocence to unpurged guilt. Between these cold banks of our air, my rhymes bridge ink to breath to prayer, to bridge builder, John Agard's poem. They gave my words this form and home. A bridge to home was one too far for David under his ill star. But by that star, some made a vow. He'd be remembered. We do now. The new air bridge will bear his name, a monument to owning shame. So Leeds will not again forget his story and our city's debt. In plaque and bridge, we should feel pride, but there remains a great divide. Bridge heart to heart and mind to mind. Raise monuments to being kind and hands when help is asked of us, for decent is as decent does. And on abuse, don't turn your back, and we won't need one more such plaque. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ian. And I'd now like to invite uh, Carol Phillips uh, to unveil the plaque. Near enough, it says a British citizen he came to Leeds from Nigeria in 1949 in search of a better life. Hounded to his death near Leeds Bridge, two policemen were imprisoned for their crimes. The river tried to carry you away, but you remain with us in Leeds, which is a quote from Carol Phillips. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to say two things quickly. Um, the bridge that you're standing on right now um, is part of the reason why the city of Leeds exists. Leeds exists as a medieval city because the Romans tried to build a Rome between York and Manchester and they had to cross this river. This particular bridge was built in 1870, so it's been here for 152 years, but before that there were other bridges and there was a ferry crossing. The, the river, this river has been absolutely central to the formation of Leeds. Without this river, there would be no city of Leeds at all. And actually the word Leeds comes from the old English word Ladenses. And the word Ladenses means, this is our tribal name, by the way. Everybody I'm looking at now is part of that tribe. Our tribal name is people of the fast flowing river. That's what, this, that's what Leeds means. 
We're all people of the fast flowing river. We nearly lost one, but we got him back today. Thank you. So now we come to the grand finale of our ceremony, the specially formed David Olawali Choir. In Kesper Aspin's important book, The Hounding of David Olawali, there are words to songs sung by Leeds United supporters after Inspector Elika and Sergeant Kitchen were imprisoned for assaulting David Olawali in 1971. For the recent BBC Four documentary, Tony Phillips, who is here today, commissioned Ellen Smith, the Leeds singer-songwriter, to sing these songs for the radio, uh, for a documentary that was made for Anna Scott Brown. We're very fortunate in receiving a Leeds-inspired grant to commission Ellen to rearrange the songs and then to rehearse a specially assembled choir for today. We're also grateful to the Tetley for allowing us to use the David Olawali room at the Tetley for rehearsals. So we're now going to have a song from the David Olawali Choir. So over to Ellen now. <laughs> Thank you. 